the Stuart 7A model steam plant, this is part 23, completing the steam turret and connecting the piping. And here is the completed steam turret, I rounded the top because I just thought it looked slightly more stylish, and there's less risk of catching your hand on the sharp corners. The steam taps were fitted in the normal manner, by applying some Loctite 542 to the threads and screwing them in place. I was really lucky with these two taps, I did not need any shim washers. When I screwed them into position, they were in exactly the right place. Here's a close-up view of the finished turret. And as you can see, the excellent PM Research cast elbow is also fitted in place. As usual, the paint on the taps will need a little bit of touching in. It does mark quite easily. Once the steam taps are heated by the steam, the paint will usually bake onto the surface of the taps. And then usually you don't get any further problems. With the PM Research elbow tightened in place, it's time to fit another double union adapter. And as usual, a drop of the Loctite 542 will stop it from leaking. The last part of this job is just tightening the union in place. The time has come to look at the steam feed from the superheater to the turret. And for this, I am reusing the existing pipe that connected to the engine. If you've been following this series from the beginning, you will realise that originally, the main steam feed went into the engine, directly into the side of the steam chest, but after I made the modification to the valve gear bracket, the steam inlet is at the front of the steam chest, and also the thread is 5 sixteenths by 32 now, not a quarter by 40. Which doesn't matter because thankfully the quarter by 40 thread on the end of the steam pipe, which I re-bent, will perfectly fit the thread on the rear of the turret. And purely by look, the pipe is in exactly the right place for the turret. All I had to do was remove the PM Research elbow adapter and screw the steam pipe union directly to the back of the turret. Here I'm making a few final, well what's the word, adjustments. I'm just bending the pipe into the correct position. And look at that, would you believe it? I really thought this was going to require a full length pipe from the superheater to the turret, which would involve bending the pipe, silver soldering union cones on the ends of the pipe, and then the dreaded cladding of the pipe in string and painting it. But no, this time I got away with it. In this clip I'm using some Brasso wadding to clean the pipes. Technically speaking, the pipes are clean, they've just come out of the acid bath. But a quick rub with some Brasso wadding, followed by a really good rub with some cloth, and the piping starts to shine. One of the first tutorial videos that I put on YouTube was an extract from my DVD set, How to Build a Model Steam Launch. Part of the video showed the polishing of the pipe on the polishing spindle. And I'm not naive, but I didn't realise that polishing the pipe was a double entendre. And not unsurprisingly, a lot of viewers commented on this video. And that's mainly the reason that I call pipe nipples coned unions, as some viewers seem to be getting aroused by the word nipples. Calm down viewers, that's enough excitement for one day. This is the cleaned up exhaust pipe being fitted in place to the pump. And at the pump end it has a quarter by 40 union nut, but at the condenser the exhaust inlet thread is 5 sixteenths by 32. So I'm using a special union cone adapter, which allows you to use 5 32nd or 4 millimeter pipe in a 5 sixteenths by 32 union nut, which is normally used for 3 sixteenths of an inch diameter pipe. The next part of the job involves making a piece of pipe to go from the turret to the steam inlet of the pump. And once again, the threads on the pump are quarter by 40 threads per inch, using a standard coned union for 5 32nd or 4 millimeter pipe. While I was doing this job, I realised that it would be a good idea to fit the PM Research elbow and the adapter at this point. And so here goes, a bit of Loctite 542, and I'm screwing the PM Research elbow onto the steam inlet of the pump. This was definitely not pre-thought, it would be very easy to fake it on a video, but no, this is the way it worked out. I suddenly realised whilst making the video, oh, hang on a minute, that part that I've just taken off the turret will fit here. It's good to have a bit of serendipity in your life, and if you don't know what serendipity means, it means happy accidents. And I've had a few of those in my life. Long may they continue. The piece of pipe that I'm going to bend to go from the turret to the steam pump has to start off being quite long. The last thing you want to do is to get to the end of the bending process and find out that the pipe is too short. And also, you need a bit of extra at each end to actually bend the pipe at the ends. In this clip, I'm also fitting the other pipe that I made that goes from the turret to the steam engine. And once again I'm using these special adapter unions, and the good news for everyone is, Chris English of CME Engineering is making them now for Blackgates Engineering. Their web address is on screen at the moment, or you can just email matt, M-A-T, at blackgates.co.uk. 
In my opinion, these are a very essential part of a model engineer's workshop, and I've used them for a few years now. Here's another one in action. This is a 5 16 by 32 union nut with an adapter cone to accept 5 32nd or 4 mm pipe. I've just replenished my stock of them, something I don't want to be without because the alternative is to make your own union for a special job, whereas all I have to do is just select the required adapter from my small set of drawers. And that's it. The steam engine and the pump now have a steam supply controllable through the turret. Just before I go, though, can you spot the deliberate mistake? It isn't really a deliberate mistake, but can you spot it anyway? That's it from me for today. I'd just like to say, please stay safe and well, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.